Did you know that during the last ice age, the average planet temperatures were only 4 to 5 degrees Celsius or 7 to 9 degrees Fahrenheit colder than they are today? Even subtle shifts in climate have historically prompted significant alterations in both terrestrial and oceanic dynamics. Hello friends, I'm Anastasia and this is Live Sustainably With Me. As you have guessed, in today's video we are going to dive into the undeniable reality of climate change. And in the end we're going to see how not only can we help lower down further temperature rise on our own personal level, but actually benefit from these little adjustments that we're going to introduce into our everyday life. Climate change is an established fact, though maybe not exactly the way we used to think about it. You see, our planet has experienced temperature fluctuations since its inception with varying averages over a long period of time, precisely 100 years, sometimes temperatures going lower and sometimes the temperatures going higher. Right now, our planet is experiencing global warming. As we've just seen in the beginning of this video, even subtle shift in temperature can lead to significant climate upheavals so profound that it would question our own survival as species. Furthermore, if we continue to produce emissions at the same speed and quantity as we are today, we're going to hit 4 to 5 degrees Celsius or 7 to 9 degrees Fahrenheit already by the end of this century. Except for this time, it's not going to be ice age. It's probably going to be hot oven age. And there is one absolutely fascinating fact. According to the British Scientific Royal Academy, even if we all stop producing emissions right now, imagine everywhere in the world we go zero right now, it would take up to 2,000 years for the atmospheric CO2 to go back to the pre-industrial levels. So the more we continue to produce new emissions, the higher the temperatures are going to rise. And the higher the temperatures are going to rise, the harder and longer it will take to reverse things. That is why it is so critical for everyone to help pursue the global initiative to limit further temperature increase below 1.5 degrees Celsius or 2.7 degrees Fahrenheit. In 2022, global CO2 emissions increased only by 1.5% versus 2021. This is 6.4% less than the year before. Some of the most important achievements of the last decade include, first of all, the Paris Agreement, the landmark, the commitment to keep our global warming below 1.5 degrees Celsius or 2.7 degrees Fahrenheit by 2030. The second one, is the shift towards circular economy, where products are designed to last, to be reused, to be recycled. Number three is reforestation, replanting forests, and afforestation, creating new forests, which is incredibly important for how trees and plants absorb CO2 emissions. Number four is continuous investment in research and development. We need sustainable solutions and ideas, especially in such sectors as agriculture. And the last one, probably not an achievement yet, but the most important focus is energy. I personally believe that we are yet to discover the really sustainable energy that can be equally supplied to every part of the world. Today, only 30% of global energy is coming from renewables, and not all of them are really sustainable. I'm sure 
each of us can argue that the outcomes of multiple international meetings and symposiums that are happening every year are not tangible or actionable enough. But let's think about it. How easy is it to change something in ourselves? How easy was it last time for you to change something within your relationship with your friends or your family or your relatives? Any company transformation usually takes from one to two years. What about changing a country or the whole world? It's not an easy task that we have on our plate. At the same time, it makes it so much more admirable, courageous, and fascinating. According to the United Nations and IPCC, Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change, every single person on this planet needs to reduce his own carbon footprint, his own little daily emissions, by 45 to 50% by 2030. Yes, not just big companies or most polluting countries, but literally everyone. And let me say something. It's so much easier than you think it is. Let me show you how. It is as easy as doing an exercise. The most important here is no extreme changes. When we integrate gradually new things into our life, this is when they become part of our reality, not just a temporary effort. And to get to 45 or 50% reduction of our own carbon footprint by 2030, all we need is to cut our emissions by only 8% every year. That doesn't sound that bad, does it? And the best part is what we discussed in the previous video. We want to celebrate abundance and our unique strengths. We don't want everyone to reduce the carbon footprint exactly the same way. Instead, we want every single person to see in their own location, in their own situation, in their own circumstance, what do this 8% actually mean? I'm about to give you lots of examples related to three biggest areas where our personal cupboard footprint is coming from. Give them a twist so that these little situations, little changes, little adjustments in your life become uniquely yours and incredibly impactful. The first and the biggest area where our personal cupboard footprint is coming from is energy. And let me tell you something, 8% is actually as little as switching off lights in one room while you are in another room. It is also as little as reading one more hour per week instead of watching series. When it comes to food, 8% is as little as avoiding meat or dairy only once per week. Rejecting one in 10 food deliveries that we often order home. Buying only 8% less packaged food. Convenient food and pre-cooked food is the worst enemy that we have out there. It comes with massive, massive carbon footprint. And most of the time, it doesn't have the nutrients that we would normally get from fresh food. So it's a little bit of waste of money and health as well. Now, the last area that I'm going to give you a few examples in is fashion. That's the third biggest polluting industry out there right now. The most important thing when it comes to fashion is investing in quality. Quality means natural fabrics and materials. It means no microplastic release, it means 100% biodegradable. It also means longevity and less waste. And most importantly, it's a really nice investment because 
The problem, the biggest problem with the cheap, fast moving fashion industry is that after three, four washes, we tend to throw these clothes away. They lose their shape, they lose their color, they lose their texture, and nothing can save them. So we are in this vicious circle where we have to run and buy new things all the time because all things don't look good anymore. When you invest in quality, you're actually saving your own money because these clothes and shoes and bags and jewelry are here to stay with you. And 8% here is as simple as investing in one quality thing per month. So by the end of the year, you're gonna have 12 quality things that are gonna last for several years. In two years time, you're gonna have 24 quality things. And by 2030, you're gonna be flawless. And look, we all have our own budgets and things that we need to prioritize. What are we gonna take and what are we gonna leave behind? Maybe it's not one thing per month. Maybe you're gonna tell yourself that you're never going to buy plastic made sweaters again, polyester. Instead, from now on, you are investing in wool. And within this year, you're going to buy four wool sweaters. That's amazing. In the next two videos, I'm also going to dive deeply into the psychology of overconsumption and why do we buy things that we don't need and how to stop doing it. But for now, don't care about this. Remember we discussed in our previous video that sustainability or sustainable living is supposed to make us feel better. When we read instead of watching series, we actually nourish our soul and mind. When we buy natural, healthy ingredients instead of pre-cooked packaged food, we are actually nurturing our body. When we buy sustainable fabrics, quality fabrics, we invest our money long-term into things that are gonna last and stay with us. And also things that are gentle and kind to our skin. I would love these little benefits of sustainable living be your guiding star in this very early stage. Sustainable living is not about restrictions. Sustainable living is about making our everyday life better and healthier. Now, I would really love to know, how are you planning to make your life better this year? while also reducing your carbon footprint by 8%. Leave a comment below and see you next time.